these are our labor delivery, recovery, and postpartum rooms. So when they come in and labor, they stay here. We prep the room um, when it's time to deliver. We have a closet over there. We pull out um, our delivery table and all the um, equipment that we need to deliver the baby. And then after they're born, we clean everything up, put everything away, help the mom get up to shower, clean their bed, change it. We put an overlay mattress on their bed so it's a little more comfortable for them. Well, if they think they might be in labor, we usually admit them to our triage rooms, their outpatient rooms, um, and then we do an assessment of the baby, put them on the fetal monitor here, and look at their contractions, see how far apart their contractions are. We usually do a cervical exam to see how far dilated they are. If their membranes are ruptured, but they're not really sure, then we have a test that's called an amnesure test. It takes about 10 minutes to run the test, and then depending on if they're ruptured or not, and if they're um, really advanced dilated more than five centimeters, then we'll admit them to labor and delivery. Uh, one of our newest features is our fetal monitors. So we have um, a Bluetooth wireless fetal monitoring system where patients can get up and ambulate in the hall with the monitor on. They can take uh, jacuzzi baths with the monitor on. Um, they can also get up and move around and do their labor within the room. They can sit on birthing balls that we have that make them more comfortable. We also have peanut shaped balls that when they're in bed we can put that between their legs. Helps them widen that pelvis so it's easier for that baby to come down. And our jacuzzi tubs are amazing. <laughs> we put them in there and generally they relax enough that when they come out they're about one to two more centimeters dilated. So if it's an emergent um, C-section, say the physician says we have to go back now, the physician will talk with the parents, um, explain the procedure to them, and then we'll just move quickly back to the operating room. If we have some time, then we'll try to um, have them sign their permits, uh, talk to them, answer their questions. We will also um, shave the incisional area before they go back. We will uh, place a Foley catheter. Usually we try to do that when we get back to the operating room, when they have the spinal in and they're numb so they don't feel that. Um, we also do um, uh, give them pre-op antibiotics and a little antacid medicine to help settle their stomach before they go back. So post C-section, um, when we're back in the operating room and the baby is delivered, we take the baby immediately to the warmer. Those babies tend to be a little more stressed, so we make sure that they're doing okay. We'll dry them off, get them weighed, make sure they're doing all right. At their five minute APGAR, we'll bring them back over to mom, and then we place them skin to skin under the drapes and cover them with a warm blanket. And then we take them to the recovery room when everything's done, and mom, dad, and baby all stay in the recovery room for about an hour hour. And then once they're stable, we take them out to their regular postpartum room. So right after delivery, we encourage skin-to-skin -skin contact. So right after delivery, if the baby's stable, mom's stable, then we'll put baby right against mom's skin, cover them with a warm blanket, and just leave them there like that. We encourage and try to get the baby to nurse within the first 30 minutes of life. And then we have a lactation specialist um, on our unit that are here from 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to 2 on the weekends and they'll come in and make a special trip to make sure that baby is nursing well for them. And then all of our um, nurses on staff have taken 18 hours of education on breastfeeding so we can also help them throughout their stay to help breastfeeding be more successful. So we have, we have 50 nurses that um, are approximately 50 nurses that are employed here. Um, some work labor and delivery and NICU and some work pediatrics and NICU and postpartum. And then we have our scrub techs who also man our desk and then help out back in the operating room. So our nurses, when they first are hired here, if they have no experience at all in labor and delivery, then they are in an intensive six-month orientation period where they're assigned one nurse that um, helps orient them through the whole process. So sometimes um, we can't have that nurse with them, you know, 24-7. So we do have other nurses that sign up and will help precept that, that nurse. Um, 
As for specialized training, we do, most of our nurses um, have taken certification uh, programs where they're certified in inpatient obstetrics or neo neonatal nursing. Um, we do have a NICU, so some of our nurses are certified in that. We have a, a level two nursery, NICU. So what that means is that we can handle babies that are 35 weeks and greater. If you come in and you're in labor, say you're 34 weeks, um, we would try to get you and the baby shipped uh, before you delivered. If you came in and you delivered too quickly, we can manage the baby, but if the baby were to need a ventilator, then that requires the skill of a neonatologist. So we would ship you to Missoula, Kalispell, Billings, um, or Great Falls. Okay. And it's the, the patient's choice on where that baby would go. So we do encourage people to come up and check out the rooms. Um, we can give you a tour of the whole unit besides just the room, um, answer your questions while you're here. We um, are going to have more frequent tours, I heard, so I would encourage you to take advantage of that. Maybe visit our website and see when those are going to be happening.